This is Twit. You probably all remember that what you felt and heard about the Russian collusion involvement in elections in the past five years. And it could have also you probably also heard about the fa- the different Facebook campaigns and ads driven by Russian state actors. Now, if at Disrupt this year, a former Facebook chief security officer, Alex Stamos, pointed out that the industry nor states have not really done anything to improve the security of election systems since the last reports of interference and disruption. In fact, just this past week, we heard about the EU Parliament Committee taking action against Stamos's former employee. Facebook submitted on Thursday to the EU Parliament Civil Liberties and Justice Committee urged Facebook to accept, and I quote, a full and independent audit as platform investigating data protection and security of personal data. Now, the the assembly summoned Facebook's chief executive, Mark Zuckerberg, but no, no, he actually didn't show up. And the political consulting, they actually wanted to talk about the allegations against the political consulting firm, Cambridge Analytica, used the data of millions of cam- Facebook users to target voting during a political pe- campaign. The resolution also urges European justice authorities to investigate any alleged misuse of online political space by foreign forces. Now, this is just the beginning of organizations, uh, uh, the government organizations trying to take uh, account for some of this stuff. But again, in the election space, there really hasn't been too much improvement here. Now, a new report from the National Academies of Science and Engineering and Medical says that to protect the integrity and security of U.S. elections, all local and state and federal elections should be conducted using human readable paper ballots by 2020 and the presidential election. Now, this is interesting. I, I want to throw this over to you guys because they're basically saying just do away with all the electric, electronic stuff. It's time to move back to the old style thing. Uh, and, and and don't worry about moving forward in the electric time until we actually figure out the security of this. Curtis, I want to throw it over to you because we've tried, chatted about this in the past. The infrastructure is not ready to support it. We don't see any improvement here. Do you think it's just time to go back to the uh, to the old way of doing things? Well, I don't think it's time to go back to the golf pencil and and photocopied <laughs> sheet. What I do think we need are systems that have some sort of paper trail. So that if there's any question about the electronic record keeping, we do have a physical backup to go to for a, a human recount. Uh, frankly, I think the uh, system that we were using in the last place I lived, the Scantron system, where you ink in the little bubbles on a sheet and then feed it into a reader, was good because the sheet then went into a hopper that was sealed. The machine did a count of the ballots. And the machine would, um, you know, f- upload that to the central side at the close of, of the polling places. But if there were any questions, if there was a recount, for example, the recount was done using the paper backup. Those physical ballots were all placed into sealed duffel bags, which were taken back to the uh, supervisor of elections office and placed in a secure location. You know, I I don't think this is a get rid of all the electronics. I think it's recognized that the electronics could be vulnerable and therefore we need to have some second channel, some non-hackable channel that we can use from backup. Yeah, there always needs to be some kind of a fallback mechanism or something to, for us to be able to uh, ensure that what we have is correct. I mean, it's a, organizations have this today in their networks and their data. Why not do this in the elections as well? Heather, I want to throw this over to you. Do you think it's it's interesting that the Facebook security officer is kind of running the charge here? Um. Yeah, so as uh, as much as uh, I'm afraid of being called a Luddite, I am um, leaning a, a lot more towards uh, the, the way uh, Curtis is saying it. Yeah, and you don't want to let the uh, the hen and the uh, the uh, the fox in the hen house here. Uh, the truth is that not. I think there are times that we we go with an advancement because we can, and not to quote from Jurassic Park, but should we we need to think about whether we should, and um, it's. It's telling that every um, security researcher that I've seen talk about this at a black hat briefing has always ended, um, begun and ended their presentation with paper ballot tra- paper trails. Right, right. Now, uh, Curtis, you you see, you're saying, hey, like let's find a fallback mechanism so we can have we can double check some of these systems to make sure that there hasn't been collusion or or integration from some outside party. 
But it, maybe does it also mean that, you know, like, for instance, there's different organizations here in different states. They all can do their own thing. Uh, do we need to, to have some kind of intervention here to say, hey, this is the process you need to follow in order to ensure security? Because obviously they're not taking any steps in the last couple of years to fix the problem. Uh, and that means that, you know, it'll continue to be a problem until like, somebody pushes along. Is there something else that we can do here? Well, I'm not sure that there is. It's possible there could be something we might do for federal elections on a federal level. But I'm not aware of any legal authority that the federal government has to enforce standards for local and state elections. Since the federal elections every two years are simultaneous with the state and local elections, well, that means that we're going to end up with this patchwork that we currently have. What I would be in favor of, to be brutally honest, is something like we've seen in other uh, regulatory regimes where what we have are, are functional definitions. You know, the following things have to happen. You have to have um, a paper trail or some sort of contemporaneous mechanism for making a non-volatile record of the votes that are cast. Now, they can... You know, if they want to do that with paper, if they want to do that with, you know, linotype machines where they cast lead ingots, it doesn't matter. But the function is what is defined by regulation. I think that would be uh, a, a good way to go. Uh, unfortunately, that would also require a fair amount of um, agreement on the part of political parties. And just at the moment... There seems to be some difficulty with that, so who knows what we're actually going to get. Right. Now, Heather, you talked a little bit about some of the organizations and how they have to have a paper trail. They want to have a paper trail. Uh, you know, when it comes to security, is there specific processes that organizations follow when it comes to that? I mean, do they say, hey, from a login perspective, we need to audit these types of things, or from a, a document perspective, we need to audit these things? Is there a particular kind of workflow that organizations follow when it comes to securing this type of stuff? Right, and I was going to add to um, uh, to Curtis's um, uh, non volatile to an inviolate method of of uh, tracking this. I'd like to take a uh, comment that was uh, given to us uh, from the chat room. Uh, Emily the Strange pointed out that hackers will find a way, and she said it in reference to something else. But um, the truth is that um, it, if there is a if there is a will, and this, these have become increasingly. Um, uh, uh, elections have become increasingly contentious and increasingly uh, important on both sides. Um, I think that this is something that we really need to get serious about and looking at the methodology to and 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 not just um, find a way to do this, but be brutal about implementing it. 